I repeat, it's better to be poor and sleep on the street than to be a false prophet living in a mansion, coming with a convoy. Have you not the same? If God did not stop Nebuchadnezzar from throwing you into the fire, it because there's a testimony in the fire. You going to the fire is a journey. You are going there to pick something that you will not pick in the water. You can only pick in the fire. Is somebody hearing me? You can only pick that piece in the fire. You can only pick the treasure. Hear the gospel. There are people hearing me right now whose mantles are not in the palace, they are in the wilderness. Whose mantles? Your mantle, you see, a mantle is a grace. God used to wrap your calling. A calling without a mantle can be hijacked by the devil. So the mantle is not in the place of comfort. The mantle is a place of adversity and crisis. That's why you know you are called of God. But things are happening that does not align. You are suffering. You are going through stuff. It's not an attack of the devil. You are on a journey to pick a mantle. You are on a journey to pick dimension of grace. At what time did God tell Paul, my grace is sufficient for you? It was when he was afflicted by a messenger of Satan. A generation that don't understand that adversity has prosperity will not become fat in the spirit. Is somebody hearing me? There are dimensions of grace. There are mantles you can only pick in the fire. The three Hebrew boys enter the fire to pick a testimony. And today we are still talking about them. There's a generation that will talk about you. I said there's a generation that will talk about you. So you must get into the fire. Tell your neighbor, get into the fire. Pick your testimony. When the world afflicts us, when God allowed the world to move against us, when God allowed the world system to kindle the fire, because there's a testimony in the fire, there are dimensions of grace in the fire, there are mantles in the fire, there are hidden covenants in the fire. God will not enter the covenant with you when you are in comfort. He enters into the covenant with you when you are in the fire. Are you, are, you, are you hearing me? Covenants that will sustain you in the land of cruelty. Covenant that will sustain you in the day of adversity. God don't enter into covenant with you when you are in comfort. You enter into such covenant with you when you are in crisis. Crisis for sons of God is an asset for liftings. It's an asset for manifestation. Are you understanding me? That's why the, the, Jesus said when they persecute you for righteousness, says, rejoice! He did not say complain. Why? Crisis are assets for us. Our making is in the furnace, not in the palace. Why would God allow the world to afflict us? Because the spark the affliction produced carried dimensions of grace that we don't get until we touch those realms. Is somebody hearing me? Tell your neighbor, stop wasting your suffering. Do you understand? Maybe that one did not hear you. Tell the next one. Want to go? You are wasting it because it doesn't come to an end. It comes to an end. It didn't give you what it brought. You become a stupid rich man. Are you understanding me? Suffering does not continue. It's for a season. Don't waste it. Pick the mantle it brought. Pick the grace it brought. That season where there's no job, don't waste it. That season where you cannot pay rent, you are living with people, don't, don't waste it. Because you are going to own houses. You will own estates. Are you understanding me? That season that you are working on food, please do not waste it. Use it. Collect the mantle the season has brought. Collect the dimensions of grace the season has brought to you. Because you will not just own one car. You will own cars. You will give cars as gifts to people. Is somebody hearing me? You will call missionaries and tell them, take this car, take to that one and go and do the work of God. That is what God will do to you. But now you are working on food. Don't waste the soul many are the afflictions of the righteous but the law there's always a full stop oh yeah there's always a full stop in every statement there's a full stop in every suffering there's, there's a full stop a time come that it comes to an end and God will look at you and say what did you make you how do you make use of the suffering what do you pick from this suffering that time that you couldn't eat what do you pick from it that time that you were single what do you pick from it now you are married you are behaving like a fool when you were single you didn't pick the treasure of being single you didn't pick the stature of being single you were only crying and asking me when am I going to get married shut up stop asking in the question, pick the treasure in the suffering, pick the treasure, pick the mantle it brought to you. And God is saying unto you, pick the mantle, you remember.
dying single? Are you dying single? And the single you everywhere because you refuse to pick. For us, suffering is an asset. That is where we warm ourselves. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Sometimes when it's getting too cold, God sends suffering. I say, warmed. He said, you hearing me? I just to warm you a little, to increase your prayer fire, to make you stay awake without sleeping. Are you understanding me? To make you stay awake. The seasons of being awake, when you are awake because of worries, how do you make use of those seasons? Are you understanding me? I repeat, may you not waste your suffering. Because it's going to come to an end. May you not waste your suffering. May you not waste for your suffering. May you not waste your suffering. In the name of Jesus. What did Paul say? He said, our light affliction is working for us. What? An eternal weight of glory that is far above. So every ounce of suffering you go through, a deposit of glory is buried in it. Every percentage of suffering has a deposit of glory. Stop wasting it. You have suffered for 10 years and you already said you didn't pick the deposit. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I just quoted. And let's look at it. I want to show you something there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Affliction will either leave you in bad attitude or in a good one. You either become bitter. Or you become better. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Verse 16. Even though our outward man is perishing in the midst of the afflictions of this world, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Tell your neighbor it's for a moment. You don't need to source it about it. Just walk with God. It's going to come to an end. Are you understanding me? It's but for a moment. If they have told me that day in 1996 or 1997, that I was going to publish three books three years later. I won't believe it. Sorry, not even three years. One and a half years later, I published three books. When I walked away, one day they had a full gospel businessman fellowship where they invited pastors for conference, and I went. The man looked at me. Everything has changed. And I went to him, sir. I said, sir, God has enabled me to write. I have forgotten what happened. I was not angry. Your former boss, you have to go and greet him when you see him in a pastoral conference with his entourage. So I went and I greeted him and I bowed and I took the book three. I wrote three books at once. I'm now seeing the arrival of, of an army of prophets. You, you have not seen those ones. Arresting the mystery of wickedness and power to become a child of God. I took the three and I gave him. When he saw the book, I don't know what happened. Rain began to fall. You know, when the weather changes, it didn't concentrate on my greeting, concentrated on the book. It was like, how did he survive? Or why did he even survive? Because the issue causes. You see, I have been cursed and cursed and cursed until they are tired of cursing. That is why curses don't fear me. They said they're cursing me from my mother's womb. So, so if, if they say they have cursed you, you become afraid, afraid of. Look, anytime anybody calls you, remember me. I say, if Takim is still alive, I will be alive. That is all. Because I have chronicle of causes. Any pastor will get angry. Any elder will get angry. Any, in fact, the first day I preached in my local church, where I stammered half of the service, they gave me only 20 minutes, 15 minutes to, to preach. I stammered for 14.5 minutes and i was about preaching just one simple message oh. jesus the master of storms that was my topic the only thing that came out well was the topic every other thing ah, ah, oh, oh, oh. i want myself like this full of anger at the end of the side you just met my mother you see this is your little boy it's because your father is not here to train him that is why he said god have called him he will suffer and suffer that was the cause he was placing on me Three years later, he and his wife came for me to pray for them. Because they couldn't bear a child. Be careful who you cause. He could become the one that will bless you. <laughs> are, you are you understanding me? All these people with their mouth. Be careful. Oh. What is it that says? And it comes to pass when God has not spoken. If the word of the Lord. 
God is standing over your life. It doesn't matter who is speaking against your life. Are you understanding me? I say if the word of the Lord is standing over your life, if you're a prisoner of prophecy, don't be afraid of curses because prophecies from heaven are superior to curses from anywhere. 